Open world games, they, much like owning a Moo Moo store, are big business. Whether it's the uniqueful playfulness of something like Minecraft or the epic crime saga of the Grand Theft Auto series, open world games sell and sell hard, with GTA alone having shifted over 150 million copies. The new generation of consoles has greater processing power than ever before, and the scope of the games is far, far larger than anything we've ever seen. I mean, just look at Just Cause 3 and Fallout 4 for examples. But with all of the current gen countryside to look at, let's pay homage to the games that paved the way. With that in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 of the very best video game open worlds. Number 10. Grand Theft Auto 3 the game that started the open world phenomenon as it is now known, Grand Theft Auto 3 is one of the most legendary games ever and holds a permanent place in the industry and my black bitter heart. There's a simplicity to GTA 3's Liberty City that you just don't find in other games, a certain subtle sense of movement that helps it feel so unique from any other virtual city. Liberty City is full of insane people, and all of them have probably screamed at you more than your parents when they tried to get you to renounce Satan. Fat chance. It's split up into three distinct sections, each with their own feel. The scummy Portland, the outstanding big city feel of Staunton Island, and the suburban style of Shoreside Vale. All of them are exhilarating to explore and act as your gateway to mass carnage and sex trade worker abuse. Number 9. Far Cry 3 Far Cry 3 drops you right into the middle of a kidnapping plot on a tropical island. And you're the victim. Much like my life, it hinges on a strong power fantasy plot. Playing Jason Brody as a reluctant hero who gets consumed by forces much larger than he could have ever comprehended. It's hardcore stuff with some powerful moments of self-realization, and that's not even the best part. As you explore the vast island that you now call home, it's difficult not to get caught up in the beauty of it all. It looks absolutely stunning, almost alive. And as you climb the lofty peaks and explore its craggy hulls, Ua Vika, you begin to become one with the jungle, waging guerrilla warfare on the gangs inhabiting the island like a privileged version of Rambo. Number 8. Fable In the world of gaming, Peter Molyneux is often ridiculed. Sorry, the script actually does go on, but I feel like we should all agree first that this ridicule is rightly deserved. Stop promising things, Peter. You're not the messiah, Peter. Actually finish a game for once, Peter. Despite this love-hate relationship, Molyneux is somebody you can tell is very passionate about the gaming industry, and it shows in his games, when he finally finishes making them. When he initially began to talk about Fable, it was touted as the greatest game in the history of mankind. While this was totally off the mark, Fable still remains as one of the most uniquely fascinating games in recent memory. There's a childlike innocence to the game, as the ongoing narrative seems heavily inspired by fairy tales, weaving its own dark tale on these classic yarns. As you explore the surrounding areas, however, you begin to notice how densely packed the world actually is. The world of Albion feels very organic and flowing, as if you're living within your own storybook. The exciting tales of Horns Bad Mannington, ruler of all and kicker of chickens. Or well, something like that. Number 7. Outcast. If you've ever heard of Outcast, then give yourself a big pat on your acne-ridden greasy back as it's one of the most obscure games ever released. It was dropped in 1999, at a time when open world gaming had yet to be forever altered by Grand Theft Auto 3. Set on the alien planet known as Adelpha, it's a vibrant world beautifully brought to life by some outstanding visual artistry. And once you're loose in the world, you have the option to travel Stargate style to any region you choose. The scope of the game is enormous as you'll find yourself trekking through a tremendous variety of different environments. Outcast was a bold and innovative game that had the scale of a major Hollywood film, and yeah, it may look a bit rougher than a night out in Edinburgh, but look past its grit and you'll find a real gem. Number 6. Spider-Man 2 When it comes to superhero games, especially the tie-in ones, the gaming audience tends to be a bit wary of the potentially disastrous results. It's a genre that is wrought with poor, abysmal titles that only serve to leave the player wishing they could watch the movie instead, or in worst case, kill themselves. So when a Spider-Man game released alongside the 2002 sequel, it's safe to say that there was a bit of concern about a mediocre title. All of those fears were completely washed away when Spider-Man 2 proved to be, at the time, the best superhero game ever made. A title that it held comfortably until it was dethroned by Rocksteady's Batman games. More on that later. In the case of Spider-Man 2, it set you loose in the city of New York as the, let's face it, annoying, sarcastic kind of asshole webslinger, and allowed you to swing about at your leisure. That first moment you shot out a webline soaring over the cityscape below you, it was exhilarating. The speed, weight, and velocity at which you could travel was simply mind-blowing, and it's the only instance in the franchise where it actually feels fundamentally right. Number 5. Sleeping Dogs Sleeping Dogs began development as a new entry to the vastly underrated true crime franchise. I mean, it had Snoop Dogg in it. Check it out, buy all the copies you can of this horrible yet amazing abomination. But after a series of developmental hiccups, it was picked up by Square Enix and then turned into its own franchise. It features a slick combat system that appears to be inspired by the current crop of Batman games. But instead of raw fisticuffs, it gives the player an unprecedented set of kung fu skills. The driving and shooting are also quite fun, in that they were laughable, but all of which strengthens the hand-to-hand -hand aspects of the game. As you gain control of Wei Shen, set free and to the open world of Hong Kong, it begins to show the huge landscape at play. There's a colossal amount of things that you can get into that are completely unrelated to the main story, including drag races, random city crimes, and just plain old carnage. Number 4. Fallout New Vegas 
If Fallout 3 is like Mad Max on steroids, then Fallout New Vegas is like Mad Max on steroids singing Rammstein songs through a flamethrower slash megaphone. Which those German boys could totally make, by the way. Have you seen any of their live shows? This weird robo-rusted tale is set four years after the events of Fallout 3, right in the middle of a war for control of the New Vegas itself. It's a complex tale where the player is often in the middle, having to choose what faction to support, and the main storyline is actually one of the strongest in the series' history. But if, and you will, venture away from that into the huge desert landscape that awaits you, you might start to become a bit overwhelmed. The game is huge, with a desolate sense of paranoia sinking in as the sun sets, and you just wait in constant fear for a death call to attack. All those f***ing annoying flies, what are they called? Cesador? Cazador. Cazador, yeah, that's the bastard. It's quite a sight to see the lights getting brighter as you realise that you're getting closer to the heart of New Vegas, and it just adds to a game that's dripping from the gusset with atmosphere. Number 3. The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion Bethesda has pretty much got the best of both worlds right now, the high-octane apocalyptic Fallout series contrasted with the swords and sorcery stylings of the Elder Scrolls games. If the nuclear destruction of mankind isn't your thing, then the latter fantasy RPG series that's been causing gamers sleepless nights since 1994 will probably do it for you. Oblivion was released in 2006, taking off from the excellent Morrowind and creating an enormous fantasy world for players to get lost in forever. Oblivion's world is an amazing feat of technical wizardry, a functioning world that has more little nooks and crannies than you'll ever find in a strategy guide. There's towns, holds, dungeons, caves, side quests, and who knows what else, all there for a player brave enough to find them. Number 2. Batman – Arkham City for the longest time, Spider-Man 2 was the ultimate superhero game, and it seemed impossible for anything to ever take its place. That is, until Rocksteady released Batman Arkham Asylum in 2009. At last, the dreams of comic book fans everywhere short of Poison Ivy giving them a vine job had come true. Exploring Arkham Island was a joy, making it seem unlikely that Rocksteady could ever even top it, but they were more than up to the challenge and released Arkham City, a game that is in every way superior to Arkham Asylum. For the first time, you could control Batman in an open world city with buildings and skyscrapers, heading down to the streets below to deliver some justice in the form of a bat fist to the temple. Gliding around the city is freeing, as the wind rustles through your cape chilling your bat balls. It was everything you could ever want in a superhero game short of Bane giving you a Venom job. Yeah, that's right, that joke was so good it deserved a rerun. Number 1. Minecraft Perhaps the most interesting thing about Minecraft's open world is that each one is different. Many games attempt to create an experience that's unique to each player, but few have ever achieved it in the same way that Minecraft has. It's a beautiful moment when you create a new Minecraft world and see what goodies await you, and how quickly you'll have to take shelter to avoid the monsters that will come out after dark. Straight up fun is mixed with terror, which often sees the player scrambling for a good hiding spot or engaging in some combat with your handcrafted sword. You create the world, fill it with whatever you wish and make it your own, which makes Minecraft one of the most incredible open world games ever. And that's our list. Got any other open worlds that you'd like to open up on? Then drop us a message in the comments section below. And if you'd like to explore the world of whatculture.com or take a journey up my dusty trail, you can do so here and here. If you enjoyed the video, then like, share and subscribe for more. I've been Jules for whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.